Hey guys, Dr. Sean here, this time with a video to discuss an interesting development, a positive development in my health, something that uh, is attributed to an observation that I've had, uh, a particular um, uh, condition for probably, uh, probably my whole life, but since I've been trying to become more healthy, it's bothered me, and that is, the, you know that coating on your tongue, no matter how much you brush no matter how much you try to get rid of it, just it always comes back and you got to keep brushing and working on get rid of it. I noticed over the years that uh, that it was the area in the way back part of my tongue, the posterior part where I couldn't reach, that always had that thick part that I could never get to. And I'm like, that's how that stuff just climbs up and it would and grow out of my uh, up out of the back of my tongue onto the rest of my tongue. That's what I thought was going on. Why you had to keep why I had to keep scraping tongue cleaners and and brushing and, and stuff. Well, the really cool thing is uh, the past week, I don't know when it happened, but I noticed it um, in the past week, it's gone. My tongue is now clean. I do not brush, I don't have to scrape, I don't have to do anything, my tongue is clean. And crazy, because uh, I noticed how clean my tongue was, I looked in the back, that the gross area, that's gone. That is not there anymore. So I'll just show you, not in the habit of sticking my tongue out on videos, but So that, that tongue coating is gone. It's just uh, nice and, and clean. I don't have uh, that, that residual pastiness anymore. And I'd like to, to see, try to figure out with the, the health community, my followers, why that happened. So uh, maybe we do a little experiment. Let's, I'm gonna discuss a lot of different things that I do and see if it uh, helps. If any of you guys do it, uh, a few of them, see, see if your tongue go, coating goes away. Or if it has, let me know what's, what's worked for you. So, uh, a little bit about science, why you want to have a clean tongue. Uh, studies show if you jump on PubMed, uh, ScienceDaily.com, or your, your favorite scientific websites, that if your tongue is cleaner, there are studies that show that you can taste better. So, it makes sense. You know, food tastes better. Your ability to use your sense of taste is improved if your tongue is encoded, your taste receptors, with bacterial overgrowth. So that makes a lot of sense. And then less dental disease. So, you know, if you have a cleaner tongue, you have less contributions of resident bad pathogens, microbes like Streptococcus mutans, and a certain variety of lactobacilli that uh, contribute to dental caries and other uh, pathogenic microbes. The healthier your environment, the healthier your tongue, uh, the healthier, less exposure to bad microbes and more exposure to beneficial microbes that benefit your teeth and your oropharyngeal tissues uh, if your mouth is healthier and cleaner. Uh, the other advantage is better breath. You know, so if you, if you have bad, bad microbes, the more chance that they'll, they'll be malodorous in quality, off-gassing, bad-smelling uh, particles, and, and basically warning, uh, don't go here. Don't go near me. I am not a good bag of microbes. I probably will give you bad pathogenic microbes. That's why we hate, hate the smell of, uh, of, of those bad those microbes. It's nature warning us that person has got some bad juju. So you don't want to be that person. So get your tongue clean. Get your oral pharyngeal health uh, an important area of your objective, which you're working on, so that you, you don't... Uh, a message to other people, you know, stay away from me. You want, you want to have nice, <sighs> healthy breath. And people are like, wow, you know, that, that girl, that guy, he's healthy. You want to be around him. Uh, they've got something going. They don't maybe not even know what's going on, uh, but it's nature telling them, hang with that person because they're healthy. And uh, so the last one is appearance. If you have a, a healthier appearing tongue, if you have a, a nicer appearing tongue, your tongue is healthier, and same kind of messaging goes on. People are more attracted to somebody who has a healthy tongue. You, if you're, you're hanging, your tongue goes out, and you're laughing, whatever. And they get a glimpse of gross-looking um, uh, tongues, then that, that's a strong signal for, for them to stay away from. So if you've been following me for a while, you know I'm always espousing two things. When it comes to health, it is best followed, in my opinion, we need to get back to the basics by two things. How you appear and how you perform. You get those two things right, you're golden, okay? Improve your appearance, and I'm not talking like better clothes and a cool haircut, no. Healthier hair, healthier face, healthier body, healthier and then uh, performance with everything you do. You wanna, across the board, be 
uh, really good at things and not just a one trick pony like you can just do one thing really good no healthy people perform well across the board so pay attention to those things less so uh, like cholesterol and labs and things that people make money from um, I'm all about finding free things that are effective that you can follow all the time and share it with you so you can save money and then more conveniently follow what you need to become awesome so you know, labs, you got to go and pay money. Uh, they're expensive. You, you, you're limited how often you do it. Because when you track stuff on your body, uh, you can do it all day long, every day. So uh, a new one here is the coating on your tongue. So we're going to work on getting rid of those things. So uh, let's start with maybe some pictures um, of some healthy. Uh, these are healthy tongues and a guy and a girl. Uh, and you can jump on Google and Google healthy tongues and uh, see see what those look like and you already know uh, basically if a healthy uh, tongue is healthy it's going to appear good tongue is unhealthy it's going to look bad so um, kind of an example um, of, of that uh, um, all right, so, <laughs> technical difficulty here's a gross mouth I had to put in something bad that's unhealthy right so I'm going to guess somebody who has teeth looking like that uh, and what I can see of their face that they would have an unattractive tongue if that tongue came out. We're glad the tongue is probably not coming out. Uh, so that's that's not a good look. And then another example of an unhealthy tongue is that coating. This is a really advanced case of that coating that we most of you probably already have some degree of that coating on. But when it gets really bad, it forms hair-like projections that look like hair. And you can get a hairy tongue. And uh, even it will start to turn uh, yellow, brown, and eventually even black. Smokers had this as a problem because of the, the health, uh, the nicotines and toxins and things that form in their mouth. And, and alcoholics, people that um, you know, drink a lot of alcohol, uh, and people use a lot of mouthwash, believe it or not, mouthwash destroys really good microbes in your mouth. So you can, you can see changes in cardiovascular health and blood pressure from using um, mouthwash because you, you downregulate your nitric oxide production, those microbes that make nitric oxide. And we'll get into that a little bit when we talk about some of the, the other interventions that I do, particularly with fer ferments, to help improve my overall health. So yeah, uh, you can jump, you get involved in science, get intensely interested in natural biomarkers and optimiz optimizing your health and you'll benefit from that. So uh, the uh, first practice I'm gonna uh, talk to you about, I uh, already told you about that I went carnivore and I'm, I'm zero carbs, so reducing the amount of carbohydrates, which oftentimes, particularly in simple processed carbohydrates, become food and a food source of mostly uh, bad microbes. So um, resident bad microbes either in your mouth or in your gastrointestinal tract. So I uh, avoid carbohydrates. Uh, the carbohydrates I do consume from like fermented uh, vegetables, uh, fermented foods are in reduced form. You know, dairy has carbohydrates, lactose. It gets reduced and uh, consumed in the reduction process and making fermentation. So I think it's a healthier way, it's a healthier form of food, uh, not processed by man, but processed by nature, natural microbes, uh, to consume that. So I'm carnivore, and the other thing I do is frequent administration of microbes. And I administer these microbes to my mouth in very, very small quantities, so like a quarter teaspoon, a little tiny bit. So it's not that I'm eating, it's not food, I call it grazing on microbes. I put these beneficial microbes, these allies, that get in my mouth and make me more healthy. They're directly involved with the production of nitric oxide. So they take nitrates from food, like meat, and certain vegetables will have uh, nitrates in it too, and they'll like, like beets, and they'll turn it into nitric oxide, which in turn helps to regulate your blood pressure, uh, optimize your cardiovascular health, uh, increase, improve the uh, condition and, and uh, performance of your endothelial tissues, which produce nitric oxide too. But these microbes in your mouth um, start producing right away. And people, if you take uh, mouthwash and you, you, you will kill those, um, those nice microbes that make the nitric oxide and you'll see uh, a, a change in your blood pressure in, in studies, which is really interesting looking at the, the harmful effect of alcohols and these chemicals that go in your mouth with those those microbes. So uh, best to do this naturally and not use uh, use soap and chemicals and things like that uh, to get rid of um, badness in your mouth. So 
let's talk about some other practices. Uh, pulling. So pulling, P-U-L-L-I-N-G, is a practice, an ancient practice, a tradition going back thousands of years where people would put oil in the mouth and squish it around. So uh, traditionally it's been done with uh, things like uh, uh, coconut oil. Uh, people pull with coconut oil. I, I have a big jar of uh, coconut oil. You can also pull with tallow uh, and ghee, um, anything that's a healthy fat. And what it does is it helps to lift and erode these biofilms. So biofilms of bad pathogens start accumulating layer upon layer um, and you can't get rid of them by brushing and mouthwash and all, all that stuff won't get rid of these biofilms. But oil and healthy practices and healthy microbes can help lift those biofilms out and get rid of the badness. So uh, pulling, I put it in the morning. Um, ideally, you should do at least five minutes um, I do it about 20 to 40 minutes, swish around while I'm taking my shower, while I'm shaving, while I'm putting my, uh, my, my clothes on, my uniform for the military right now, I'm activated. Uh, so I, I put, uh, put that oil in and I like to add to that oil uh, pink Himalayan salt. So either pink Himalayan salt, um, which I, I also get from uh, uh, cheap from uh, 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 Costco. And I don't have financial interest in Costco, but lots of people shop, shop at Costco, and so does Dr. Sean. And uh, Redmond Salt. Redmond Salt has got um, uh, similar qualities. And the qualities I like about these salts is they're old, and they have lots of minerals. And these minerals are awesome. Pink Himalayan Salt, 240 million years old. How old is that? That's incredible. And that was taken in part of our environment that you know so long ago that was so pristine and clean. We'll never get those kind of minerals again anywhere. So uh, get that peak Himalayan salt, get in your mouth, and it helps to remineralize your teeth and helps give uh, health and minister to you know, uh, part of the factors involved in, in all the awesome processes that go in your mouth, creating nitric oxide. And who knows what else that we haven't yet studied and looked at, but when you are super healthy in your mouth, all over your body, inside your body, these fantastic things going on that we still don't know about but it starts with good, clear, natural things, the clean, natural going on in your body that you're adding to your body and not artificial stuff. So pulling, I uh, recommend. The, the other thing is uh, I don't use toothbrush, toothpaste rather. Um, toothpaste filled with chemicals, uh, fluoride, and, and you know, all, all sorts of other, look, look at the label on those things. Um, so a little bit a natural, more natural thing. If you're gonna, you know, you wanna clean your mouth out, you, let's see, you got a really funky, you know, your transition, you, you got a tongue that looks really bad. Um, then maybe use Dr. Bronner's, okay? So Dr. Bronner's, you can actually drink this stuff. I don't recommend it, uh, but it's it's soft and, and natural enough that you could brush your teeth with it and, you, and your teeth will feel nice and clean. So uh, uh, you can consider using uh, a little Dr. Bronner's uh, on your brush. And, uh, you know, for, for years I used a, a toothbrush, uh, but one of the things I know is uh, I'm a freak when it comes to smell. I smell things a lot. Um, you know, it helps me figure out what's good, what's bad, you know, you know, no bueno, <laughs> bueno. Uh, and usually toothbrush smell bad. I can smell bad microbes. I learned to stick mine out in the sunshine and how to get rid of those, those bad microbes. And I think part of the problem is this plastic, right? These plastic filaments, um, they just, adhere, you know, bad pathogenic microbes adhere to that better, um, than, uh, something else I'm going to tell you about. And there's something else that I think are, are better to use is a Mieswak stick. So a Mieswak stick is this thing right here, M-I-S-W-A-K. And it's a stick, and it comes packaged like this. You can get it off Amazon for, I don't know, five, 10 bucks. Uh, they last you a while. And see these little bristles at the end? You gotta create that by, you know, uh, uh, chewing on that end a little bit, getting it soft, you know, uh, chewing it till you get a brush like this, and then you brush your teeth. And maybe I'll do a video. If you want me to do a video on a Mieswak stick, you wanna learn more, shoot me a comments and say, hey, Dr. Sean, give us a, a, a video, maybe five minute video, uh, 10 minutes at most, not too long, Dr. Sean, on a Mieswak stick, and I'll be glad to do that. So Mieswak stick is super absorbent. So the surface area is greater on this, and it just lifts uh, food particles and bacteria off your teeth and clean. You could clean your gums with it too as well, and super nice, and your teeth, boy, your teeth are gonna get so white. When you use this right away, you'll know as soon as you're done, your teeth are whiter. It's crazy, and it has a natural resonance. So check out the Mies Walk Stick. Um, I think it's a great practice for you to, to be involved in as a substitute of a, a brush rather than using a, a fake artificial plastic 
uh, brush. The other thing uh, that I warn you against, uh, I'm not a fan of, uh, don't, don't sue me, I'm, I'm not gonna flash of what that thing is, but it's a ultrasonic uh, device and it uses high frequency, you know, to kind of blast tartar and, and collection. They work, no doubt about it, and they got studies that show it works, and I won't, I won't deny that, but let's get a study to see if maybe they cause harm. And so I'm just gonna postulate, I don't know, I'm not saying it does, but it may cause, that high frequency might cause problems to your sensitive nerves that are in your mouth, that are part of the awesomeness that are going on with the, the oil pharyngeal cavity, and your vasculature. You need your super healthy uh, vasculature to, to deliver and receive um, you know, in your, your environment, beginning in the digestive system right in your mouth. Uh, those tissues, I think, might be harmed by this high frequency. The reason why I say that is, uh, you know, I see studies that, you know, high frequency devices like dental devices that doctors, dentists use, uh, cause, um, you know, carpal tunnel and, and, and neuromuscular uh, uh, conditions and, and decreased performance uh, to, because of the nerves in those hands. So anybody working with high frequency equipment, it, you know, it can cause problems because it's not natural. We just don't have defenses. Maybe, you know, a million years from now. If we're still around, uh, if we keep using stuff like this, maybe we'll, we'll develop it. But right now, uh, nope, I think it, it may be a no bueno. So I stopped using it. And uh, I think um, and the other thing is an interesting study uh, device that just came out that basically is kind of a high frequency device. And you put it on, you know, an area before you give it a shot and it deadens the nerves, you know, because I think it, it stuns the nerves, you know, kind of, that's the only way I could think about it. And then you stick the needle through and you don't really feel it. Well. What happens over a long period of time, you know, maybe the shot, not a big deal, but if you're brushing your teeth all the time for me, you know, are you going to be damaging? Maybe. So uh, I don't see anybody else talking about, but I'm going to raise it as an issue. And I, th I think nature is best. So maybe the Miswok stick for you would probably be the best thing to do. The other thing I want to talk to you about is uh, vinegars. So uh, vinegars, um, apple cider vinegar. Uh, and coconut vinegar, probiotic. So probiotic means with a mother. You want to look for that. You want it to be organic and um, you want it to be unpasteurized. So it has living cultures raw with great uh, bacteria, uh, pathogen or, or microbes. I don't want to call them pathogens, but microbes that are resident in there and dilute it. You're, you're using this for the, the pathogens, not for sustenance, you know, like drinking vinegar. So you, you took a few drops and an ounce of water and I swish around uh, in my mouth. So it's very, very, very dilute, those microbes. You don't need much, uh, you know, just the bacteria get in there and they help to minister um, to your teeth, your, your gums, your mouth, your tongue. And so I do that pretty often and, and uh, I kind of swish around with my apple cider vinegar and my coconut vinegar, both of these available off uh, Amazon. And because these are living, uh, they're in clear glass jars, they ferment in dark barrels and dark, uh, dark areas. Sunlight and light would disrupt the fermentation process. So it's gonna hurt these things. So I keep these things in dark cabinets in my refrigerator or a dark cabinet where light doesn't get to it. I've done a posting on that. That's, about, that's all I'm gonna say there. But uh, consider putting some awesome uh, apple cider probiotic, apple cider vinegar, co coconut vinegar into your mouth and uh, help to freshen your breath and contribute to the good path, uh, good microbes that should be going into your mouth. The other thing I do, kind of a new thing, is I eat liver. And maybe liver is, is helping me become more healthy and help my tongue got more healthy. But I, t I do, I eat a, a pound of grass-fed liver a week. That's a pretty good amount. Most people don't do that much. But uh, it makes me feel awesome. <laughs> and I definitely noticed a change uh, since I've added liver to my diet. And so something I recommend doing. Uh, I've been consuming um, liver oil. I take fermented cod liver oil, which I think is an interesting product. Um, I use this, this particular product here. It's fermented uh, cod uh, oil from cod livers that have been fermented. So this basically is, you're not going to take this because it tastes good. You're going to take it because of its nutritional value and not, um, not because of a taste. So just kind of, you know, apprise you of that fact. It's not a good taste and you're not going to see food cooking shows uh, on this one. But it's, it's an interesting product and you can consider it. Uh, but liver, I think, is a really good little um, addition to your diet that you consider doing. Um, maybe a little bit easier to, uh, to consume are fermented uh, vegetables. A uh, real popular one is kimchi. So I'm looking around for my kimchi, and here it is. Um, it's just fermented sauerkraut. It's Korean, 
and uh, when when you marry into a Korean family, they, the mother will the mother-in-law will give her daughter-in-law uh, a, a cask of some of her kimchi to add to her her own mother's. Um, so they they blend they so these microbes are getting passed around traditionally the best ones and they they continue to evolve and become better. I love that idea. And uh, so I eat a lot of, uh, 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 frequently, in the very small amounts of fermented vegetables, and kimchi is a big one. And uh, I, I put a, just a tiny bit of grease in the microbes all day long, the, like a little tiny quarter of a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, just get in my mouth. And uh, um, the other addition is a, a fermented sauerkraut, fermented red sauerkraut, fermented beets, um, and a really interesting product. Uh, beet juice has been shown to significantly incre increase uh, endurance and performance in, in, uh, at, in accomplished athletes, not beginners, but even the accomplished ones, uh, significantly. So I even heard rumors that the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, is considering banning beets, uh, beet juice. I don't know how they can do it. It's a natural substance, but it really does have that much of a contribution. But even more interest to me is fermenting that beet juice, getting rid of the carbohydrates, and getting the added nutritional value and the microbiome value, microbial value, and the protective value, I think, when you ferment naturally processed foods through microbes, I think it helps to decrease some of these plant defenses that I'm really worried about that we don't understand. So uh, if I, the only vegetables I take, the only plants I consume, are those that have been fermented. And, and this kvass is a really interesting one. So fermented beet juice is kvass. Every member of the Russian Olympic titty, uh, titty <laughs> <laughs> of, the, of the Russian Olympic Committee will, um, will consume kvass. So kvass is a really interesting product and it, it's got this matte, really beautiful purple color which you can't quite see but I'll put some in this little dish here um, that you can see that awesome really amazing purple color that you can ever make the betaines and beta, beta cyanines in there with the anti-inflammatory benefit I think are really interesting. If they've been fermented then I will will consume and expose myself to it. So I recommend um, that you consider kvass and fermented uh, vegetables and fermented dairy. So fermented milk, lactose, the carbohydrates in milk. Uh, I am concerned about that. I'm not sure that we really should be eating that as, as adults. I think if you ferment them, it reduces those carbohydrates and makes it more tolerable and I think safer to consume. But when you uh, ferment milk, you turn it either to yogurt or depending on the, the, the starter culture that's used, or to uh, kefir. And uh, yogurt and kefir, two things, must be whole milk, whole fat. Do not separate out so you can have another fat product to sell and make money from. You keep it together as nature intended it. So it must be whole fat, must be unsweetened, no fruit, no flavors, nothing unsweet. Suck it up, buttercup. Get over the, the fact that you love sugar and you want something nice. You just got a small amounts of that stuff, get it in there, and eventually you'll start craving plain unsweetened yogurt. You'll love it. Plain unsweetened uh, kefir. You'll love it. And it's, it's awesome. Fermented animal products, uh, dairy products are fantastic. So uh, consider those as well and you'll benefit from it. The last point I want to make is uh, don't harm your mouth, you know, putting bad things in. So I mentioned like toothpaste and chemicals. Another one you probably do all day long, you don't really think about it, is water. So uh, chlorinated water, uh, sometimes water is fluoridated. I take, you know, um, I, I have a filtration system at home, I won't go into it now, but when I travel and something to get started on with is um, uh, I use Brita pitcher, pit, pitchers and I, you know, I don't have anything involved with uh, Brita. Uh, and, and I don't even, you know, I haven't looked at studies to see how this works, but I figure there's some benefit. Um, I, I'm really worried about when I, when I deploy in the military, we're always drinking out plastic water bottles because we're out in the desert, and that's what we get. But I don't want those microplastics and the toxin residues. Do you think anybody is scrubbing those plastic bottles, removing those toxics that, that are natural residuals, uh, you know, part of the, the process of when those plastic bottles get manufactured? No way, Jose. That stuff is in there and then you know, it's floating around in your water and then we're ingesting it and who, and who in the Hades is studying it? You know, I, I don't trust them. So um, I get a Brita pitcher and I stack them together like this and um, I pour my, my water, my plastic uh, bottle water into those uh, pitchers 
and uh, I collect that water. I like to use, I don't want to put it in a plastic jug, so I got a glass mason jar. I travel with these things, and uh, I put it in a glass mason jar. And I usually ideally do three of them, but for the purposes of the video, I just have two of them up here. And, uh, um, and then I've cut a hole in the lid to stack them so that they can go in easily on top of each other. And then I just dump the water and walk away. So um, it's, I get triple the filtration in the same amount of time. And it's, it's probably my Asperger's. I'm hyper efficient. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I worry about that stuff. So I'm not, you know, one filtration cycle is not enough. So I do three. Um, and maybe if I was a wealthier man, I'd buy five have a huge stack but uh, three uh, three is good and uh, two is good and one one is better than nothing so consider that a little tip the reason why I have it in a box is uh, that's my own little idea so that I can put it in that thing and then walk away and it stays balanced so you know I just I just cut a hole in that box and and that's how that works so um, all right well those are my tips to help you with your coating on your tongue see if it goes away and I hope it does uh, I'd love your comments if you, you have anything about what you do or to, for this video. As always, anything I do, I appreciate feedback. Give me some other ideas about videos that you would like, postings that you'd like to see on my Instagram or my, my, uh, my Twitter when I tweet. And uh, as always, I really appreciate uh, the followers that I have and the opportunity to, to share my, my passion, which is to make people who really want to get healthy and really perform better, really get healthy, and really perform better. That's that's what I, that's my life purpose. So I really enjoy this uh, the opportunity to do that. So uh, if you like this this video, give it a like. Um, love it if you pass it on to other people, particularly people that need to learn about becoming more healthy and uh, the optimization of health. Uh, share this uh, video with them, and uh, thank you very much.